On the breakfast today, terrorists launch attack on Kaduna Road as after train tragedy. After bandits launched an attack on the Kaduna Abuja train with eight persons confirmed dead and several persons injured or kidnapped. Also on the breakfast, there was wild drama at the Mushud Abiola National Stadium after a crucial clash between Nigeria and Ghana in the World Cup qualifying series. We'll get an eyewitness account of what happened. And don't forget, we also would be looking through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Oh, welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadanya. It's the midweek edition. I'm Messi Popo. Beautiful morning and it's good to know that you're on the other side and you're part of the breakfast. All right, uh, like always, we will be uh, analyzing all of the top trend and stories uh, you know, that has happened uh, in the past 10, 24 hours and uh, what uh, people are talking about. And security seems to be uh, one of uh, the main issues. But then again, let's talk about uh, what happened yesterday. The second leg of the Nigeria Ghana you know, match uh, took place yesterday in Abuja and uh, it ended um, one all in as much as um, Nigeria failed to qualify and um, Ghana is in the World Cup or are in the World Cup and um, mercy, better luck next chance to, or next time to us Nigerians. And then again, after everything, you know, like you read earlier on, there was a mild drama Nigerians. I guess it was just a bottle of anger after everything that's happened in the past few days. The Nigerians uh, just wanted to vent somehow. I'm not trying to make, make excuses for them, but that was what happened yesterday. We failed to qualify for the World Cup and some people, you know, just uh, took it the other way and things just went all right. Uh, so, so it's a lot, first of all. I was hoping that you were going to be very patriotic, uh, you know, <laughs> feeling sad to share the feeties just before we continue the conversation. But that's on the side. You know the, you know the thing where, I don't know if you've ever heard that stuff, uh, the first will become the last. Mm. You know, the, the, first, the last can become the first. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, you know, typical of what happened yesterday. It's an irony, I would like to say, because Ghana finished 19th position in the AFCON just some weeks ago, and it's the first country to qualify. As much as there's a lot of jubilation, uh, this is not me trying to be biased because I'm a Nigerian <laughs> and the fact that, you know, they're going to be in Qatar and we, we, we're not even sure. Of. Let's hope, because this will be Africa now, Ghana, Africa, but of course you have all the African countries, but let's see how far, Mercy, you know, this one, it, let's you see know, how far they go with it. They will, I will pray they go far, sorry to just uh, interject there, but you know why it is really very painful? There's similarly this, um, you know, what I say, uh, unwritten rivalry uh, between uh, Nigeria and Ghana. Even the match yesterday was uh, termed um, battle of the jollof, as it were. You know, over time, there's been this uh, talk, uh, 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 who makes some better jollof rice, uh, Ghana or Nigeria? Uh, which one do you prefer? And all of that. So yesterday, there were lots of uh, mockery, you know, all over, uh, some actors uh, and uh, some popular uh, social media uh, influencers, uh, you know, were happy, uh, the Ghanaians that is, uh, you know, mocking Nigeria that uh, we failed to qualify. John Dumelo, I don't know if you... Uh, of course, John, why not? I'm sure you like his movies, you know, so he, he, was, he was just mocking us that we, you know... So, so, but if you, if, you, if you look at the game, really, uh, to be very um, precise, however, mm. if you look at the game, just like I have mentioned, we're waiting to see what happens. I mean, this is not me speaking because I'm a Nigerian, <laughs> but it's the fact that it's not that, you know, the Ghanaian team is a better theme, and we don't know if they will survive at the end of the day when they get to, you know, Qatar. They could just be knocked out immediately. But that's a conversation for another day. But if you look at the stats, we have no reason whatsoever not 
to actually be on top of the game and win that one uh, looking at full time or at the time I, I think it was almost 81 minutes or thereabout if you look at the stats you find out that Nigeria had every reason first of all talk, talking about the shorts we had 14 shorts uh, where you have Ghana having two and then uh, shots on target or shoots on target you had Nigeria getting two ball possession Nigeria was uh, you know topping it with 62 percent and Ghana with 38 percent and uh, you know the passes 353 passes 229 pass accuracy 73 65 the list is almost on and you can never tell but what exactly I mean what, what, where did we get it really really wrong you know it's the conversation so over time you find out that yes right now those who said that Ghana Raw should be out, I'm sure they are feeling very sorry. And some people feel like Ghana Raw would be having a very great laugh. One of the issues that we have talked, uh, you know, constantly talked about is the fact that tactically we're not very intact, okay? And so, you know, tactically, technically, we were not very there. And that's the reason why uh, you had. Um, getting raw, getting out of the space, but of course, what do we even have? Yesterday was just a display that we have these boys. I mean, if you look at these players, these are winners of, you know, uh, you you find out that we inherited these guys from 2013. I mean, uh, on the 17. 2013, 2015, if I'm not mistaken, and then of course you also have. Uh, World Cup winner of 2014 or thereabout. I mean, I'm just trying to say that uh, th this team of players are fantastic. They play in different leagues across the con the world. So, uh, what is the problem that they come in to play for the country and they're not doing well? Fantastic talents that you have. That that's the, the the truth. You must acknowledge that. But but what what has really gone wrong? So it just shows that. <laughs> It just just is it doesn't it? Uh, you know but to be very honest the yeah. problem is that we are we lack you know tactically and and that has always been the problem so one would expect that when we started the game when we started playing of we should play experienced players mm -hmm. but that's not what happened so you find out that the coach should have you know started off with the likes of Lukman Emmanuel Dennis uh, of course you you find out the the, the fact that he started with Basi. He should have started the game with experience. You know, players. The, the strong hand. It's just simple. Lot yeah, there, there's no time to joke. This is not a time to experiment. You don't yeah. even have another time. So we're expected that Guavo to have started, you know, playing with this game with experience legs. legs. Put the best legs first. Mm. But of course, you know, he didn't he didn't start off and we, we made several changes in the first first quarter or in the first half. And and that didn't get us anywhere, right? So old legs starting first, the team is uh, better keeping possession of the ball but lost balls we didn't really have great strikers that's actually what it is and then we also understand that we have a lot of wingers why didn't we use a lot of them so at the end of the day it's enough for you to say you have uh, talented players creative players you know great fantastic persons but uh, the tactics, the combination to get mm. the result is where we're lacking in, and that's where the problem lies. I think lies. we need to go back to do you know, our homework and uh, you know, you mentioned a whole lot of um, things um, that um, went wrong yesterday in, in terms of um, technical direction and our tactics. I think uh, our technical crew need to check and uh, you know, because I've uh, because it, it, Nigeria is missing out and it would take us another four years again before we start thinking of um, the next uh, World Cup. But then again, uh, Ghana is on their way to Qatar. We wish them the best and of course, I will just uh, pray since they are African that, uh, you know, they no. would support them. <laughs> they are our brothers. Really? Nigerians <laughs> are very petty. I'm not they sure. They are brothers. We are not there, so we See. have to... You no. know, lose Gala and support our real. brothers. Just saying, this, is, this is not it. But just before we move <laughs> away, because we're having that prompt uh, to, to move away quickly. Okay. The truth is, Nigerians are not going to be supporting Ghana. I understand it's Africa. You also have other African countries that have actually So, rather support someone, uh, some other teams. Don't worry. Instead of Ghana. Your country and everyone here is All petty. Country. So, they'll put it out. When it's time, All you'll country. find out. All now, country. but, but, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, we need to pay attention to all of this. Uh, the likes of Osimhen didn't have any support. Even when he had the ball, yeah. it caused for a lot of concerns. We had poor passes. Technically, we need to do better. Oh. We had, you know, combination. And also, I would think that we would have played this match in Lagos. I mean, the energy in Lagos is... 100 what over 100 or 200 it would have made you know see uh, 
at some point, if you were following the game, you, you could probably see uh, some persons who were tweeting. The feel was over. I mean, you had a lot of persons who actually turned out, supporters and what have you, but you didn't really have uh, the cheering, yeah? Uh, the cheering didn't come, so it felt like, you know, there was so much quiet. The energy would come from Lagos. I mean, Abuja people are very cool and cozy. Uh, they're not around there to make the noise. Another issue that was top notch again is the fact that with the incident that's gone that has happened in Nigeria, we're expecting to see you know the players sympathize uh, uh, with those who have lost their lives during the attack. I mean the attack that happened on the train, eight persons have died, and unfortunately another attack happened yesterday. The black you know handband would have actually gone you've gone a long way, um, showing that. We sympathize with this. They do this when they're playing for, you know, other clubs. But what really happened yesterday, really, really right. sad. Right, let's, so this uh, is a part of it. A lot to talk about. But I'm sure that in the course yeah. of the, the show, yeah. we'll definitely continue this conversation. All right. Uh, and yesterday was another um, black one still um, in Kaduna. Another uh, attack happened uh, barely 24 hours after the, the train incident. Uh, another happened. And... Uh, Former uh, Lagos State Governor is in the news as he had to cancel his birthday, you know, in commemoration of um, those uh, who lost 11, all of the incidents that happened uh, uh, in Kaduna yesterday, days before. We have um, clips of that. I will take that and we'll come back and talk more about it. Stay with us. It took a long wait of over five hours for the well-publicized 13th Annual Colloquium to kick off. The venue of the event, Eco Hotel and Suites, had dignitaries eagerly and patiently anticipating the party. The entrance of the celebrant set the mood for the show. The excitement was at fever pitch when suddenly Tunubu took to the podium and called of the well attended event. His reasons was a cardinal train attack in which many people were reportedly killed and others injured. Me to be here celebrating, dancing and enjoying myself doesn't show enough concern of a state man as a senior citizen of this country. I will urge the two clergies who are here present to continue to pray and every one of you to go home and pray. This event should not be holding. He described the incident as a tragedy that calls for sober reflection and not a celebration. Very sad indeed that over 60 people and many more were killed and bombed on the train between Kaduna and Abuja just last night. That is a very serious incident about the security of lives in this country. He called for special prayers to be and offered for, for the reports of the victims and for the nation in general. This is the 13th annual colloquium in honor of Bola Tinubu to celebrate his 70th birthday. But as we can see and as we have heard from him, he has cancelled the celebration in honor of the Cardinal train attacks. From the Echo Hotel and Suites, love Ikuku Oyedoku, plus TV News. Oh, love uh, Ikuku Oyedoku uh, bringing us up to speed. Uh, what went down at um, Eco Hotel yesterday, uh, former governor of Lagos State and presidential aspirant of the um, All Progressives Congress, Abola, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, canceling his 70th birthday all in commemoration of um, Nigerians uh, who you know, were gruesomely you know, kidnapped, killed uh, in the Kaduna Abuja trade. Our hearts uh, uh, go out to all of them and... Um, well, it is really sad, and, but then again, I, I, I applaud um, the former governor, uh, uh, the f 
for his stand yesterday because uh, nobody should really be in a celebratory mood uh, when all of these uh, issues are, are really happening. How, why would they be seen dining and um, whining, you know, when a lot of people are just there, you know, with a mournful look, uh, with families grieving? It will be so, so, so ironic if they went on to celebrate when Nigeria, when the country is indeed mourning at this particular time. But some people have actually described, you know, that action. As much as we say, yes, it is fantastic, because yesterday uh, you could... I mean, everyone should be upset. It's not something to celebrate. But at the end of the day, you also need to understand that, hey, uh, he, he... I mean, I mean, this is not me saying anything. Some people have described this as a prank. Once upon a time, and I was told... No, yes, of course, but you also need to ask yourself if this had happened, you know, when he didn't have an interest, would he do this? I mean, once upon a time, I was told a story by my parents, and they said, you know, in 1985, there was once upon a time where you had IBB standing in the rain uh, during the parade, uh, the Independence Day parade, and people clapped. Uh, that, you are talking about Ibrahim Babangi, and at that time you want to also talk about the fact that not shortly after there was an overturn, I mean a coup that actually happened. So people have actually described this as another prank, <laughs> you know, that, is, that has happened. The election years, yeah, you should, I mean, when you live in this space. The question would not be, I mean, as much as that's a very fantastic thing to do, um, that's why some persons have created why our players were not sympathizing with those who have lost their life. I mean, this has happened. We don't even need a thousand or two thousand. The fact that you have one, two, three percent, it's okay to, you know, sympathize with them. But you gradually, just want what, life alone, yes. But, but, but the reason why you're having people classifying the action of the former, uh, the, the former legal state governor hmm. as a prank is because it's a political season. He has declared an intention, not necessary to Nigerians, but of course, you know, to the president, and we know he's vying for uh, the office of the president. president yes. And so some people are saying this is also another that gimmick is a political year so anything to just score and just uh, you know yeah. win the sympathy and the hearts of the people it would be okay to cancel it so but right now it's almost difficult to understand whether that's coming from well. a hat you know of uh, feeling uh, you know being in the shoes of another person who has gone through this so this is just you know another way to say hey we're just trying to get well, the vote. Maybe and the get tides the are just, the uh, you know, uh, all coming together. It is. It was his birthday. He is campaigning. But whatever it is, whether it is a political gimmick, whether it is a political prank, the fact is that um, Nigeria is mourning. People have died, and. Uh, he could have as well gone ahead and just decided to celebrate no, that it, nothing it, would have it, happened. It wouldn't, it wouldn't make any sense. You no, know, nothing would have happened. No, the truth is, nothing would have happened. You know, as long as he nothing would have happened. All, because we are not in his hand. I'm not trying to hold brief for the former No, government. No, you can't even you know? hold brief. I'm yeah, just telling you I that. Just feel that it, it, it's right. unfortunate that this is happening now. The, the big mm. question is here. It's, it's fantastic. We're applauding him, right? But the big question would be if this has happened not at a time where there's an interest at stake. Would he act in this, you know, would he take this same decision that he has taken? We per eventual, his tell. birthday happened and he tell. never declared to become president. He's never talked about mm. wanting to become president. Mm. Would he cancel his birthday? So, well, so, so, but, you know, we leave that, you know, that that's not something that we have an answer to. Well, um, but we'll just leave it that. Yes, yeah, so, so that's uh, uh, all of um, the top trending for today. Uh, once again, uh, a happy birthday related to the former governor of Lagos State. And of course, uh, we still uh, mourn those who have lost their lives uh, in Kaduna State. We'll be looking at all of that uh, much later, you know, in one of our discussions uh, this morning. But we'll take a breather. When we come back, we'll go straight to off the press and review what's on the front page of the National Dailies in a moment. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa.